Hey y'all, in this video I'm just gonna kinda open up about motherhood. I always talk about motherhood, the highs, the lows, the good, the bad, births, raising children. I feel like that's like one of the main things in my channel. But I just wanna kinda talk about an enlightenment I recently had about motherhood. It was actually a video requested by a friend and when she requested it, I started thinking and I really had this realization of how I now view motherhood. So let's jump in of the journey from going from maiden to mother. So the friend who asked this question probably is not gonna realize how much awareness she actually brought to my own motherhood journey in asking this question. So this, I really thank her so much for asking this question because it has made me realize so much that has changed and happened in my own mothering journey just by this simple question. So as always, if y'all have video requests, leave them below. I'll be happy to make a video on that. And a lot of times it really sparks something more in me. So she basically asked, how do you make mom time in your day? When I had my first baby, I had time to work out, read, shower before she even woke up and then during her naps. That was me as well as a first time mama. Then she had her second child and she hasn't been able to make time for herself. I totally feel that too because that's how I was with my second daughter. And she just said she found this hard to deal with. How do you deal with three children? Um, of course, she says she loves children and knows they're such a blessing, but sometimes she just feels so like touched out and she needs a little time to recalibrate by herself and asked how I do it. So first of all, that her entire story was me with my first child and my second child. And we're going to talk about kind of the journey I think we go through as mothers from being a maiden to a mother in just a second. So this was me. I completely felt like I needed mom time. I needed to do all the things when he went, when my first child was napping or when he was still asleep or when he went to bed at night, I felt like I needed all this mom time. And that was just me coming from that maiden state of mind. When we still have that maiden mindset, we want to be free. We want to have free will. We want to have like a free spirit. We're very selfish still, not in like a rude selfish way, but we're selfish because we've only ever really truly had to take care of ourselves. We've never had to put another human being first. I mean, of course we might put our husbands first, but that's, that's not the same as your child because your child is literally helpless and you have to put their needs ahead of yours in so many ways. This was totally me. I felt like I needed to get away from him at times. I felt like I needed to pass him off to my husband because I just needed me time. Then my second daughter came and not long after she was born, I came home, um, stay at home mom. So I was with the kids even more and had even less help in the daytime because I was just with the two kids all day. And I, she was with us at night. She slept with us, co-slept. She always wanted to be held. And I literally was would get so anxious when their nap times would not line up and I would not have any me time. Like I felt like I was touched all day long. My husband would come home and I would like not even want to give him a hug because I had been touched so much that day. So I totally feel you in this, but I did not realize it until just here recently in my third motherhood journey, my third child, how I don't have those feelings anymore. And it's truly like I've finally made that bridge from maiden to mother. And we'll elaborate that on more in just a minute, what that actually means. But I don't now have those feelings of when my youngest daughter and her nap does not line up with the older two kids' naps. I just hold her and play with her and get my things done with her on my hip or feeding her. And I don't have those anxious, overwhelming thoughts that I did with my first two. And I think that's because I finally made the bridge into motherhood. That not that selfless love putting others needs ahead of yours completely entirely and you just don't crave that mom time anymore as as you would call it and i know that's hard that's really probably not the answer that she was looking for in that question but it's really just a journey that i think we as moms make and when our mindset changes and we truly change that philosophy and make that bridge we don't we find you don't need as much of that mom time. She asked about working out and reading and taking a shower. I still do all of those, thing, those things, but many of the times my kids are just right with me or I'll pull in my husband at times for me to go get a shower. But as far as like working out, many times we take morning walks every morning, my kids and I, and they're just right along with me. I might have to wear the baby in the wrap. I might have to push her in the stroller. I might have to stop multiple times during our walk to attend to a need, but that's our exercise. And my kids just do it with me. I don't have that mom time to exercise alone like I used to with my first child and even some with my second child. If I do some sort of like a workout routine on the computer or my phone or a video, my kids just do it with me. And 
There was a time when I would have been so annoyed that there were people around me and that I could not get straight through a workout, start to finish, even like a 20 minute workout. But that, I don't have that mindset anymore and it's truly just that bridge that was made. Um, as far as reading, um, if I'm doing like a devotion, my kids oftentimes just sit around me and I either read it out loud with them or they just sit beside me and I read. And yes, it's not true like alone time, but um, your children can be around you and you can still get so much out of his word and, and pray with him and just pray with your kids. My kids will do prayer time with me if we're reading something from the Bible. And it's just, I talk about this all the time, just welcoming your kids into all parts of your day and not always sending them away. And you're gonna find you need a lot less of that mom time. I, I found when I was always sending my kids to play, please go play, please go do this, please go sit down and eat. When I, when I quit pushing them away all the time, I found that I did not crave that mom time because I was so worn out from telling them to go do something else, telling them to go do here, go, go to there. I was just worn out by the time they went to nap and I was like, I need this time alone. But now that I've just welcomed them into our days and just truly take joy in their presence, I feel like I don't need as much time alone. So right now you're probably thinking, how are you alone right now? I just did a video on how I get my kids to independently play and that's what they're doing right now. They're independently playing upstairs. I told them that I needed about 15 or 20 minutes and they understand that. And this also comes with if you're needing a few moments of downtime to recalibrate, this does not happen every day. Every day I don't film a video like this. I don't need this time every day. Eliza is actually with my husband right now. He is off at this moment, so he is a lot of help too, but there's many days he doesn't get home until four or five o'clock and I am here with the kids all day and I might not get that time to be by myself or recalibrate if all the naps don't line up. So that is kind of how I get in mom time, I really don't. It just comes in little pockets. I might have my kids helping me cook and they might slip away and I might finish cooking by myself and I consider that just a little bit of peace and a long time. And I just, this is truly a mindset shift of changing your, your attitude. And then again, I know this is not answering the question she asked, but this, this is truly how I've seen it and the, re 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 the realization I've had. So I've actually just saw a post recently about going from maiden to mother, really put it all like into perspective for me and how I finally made, feel like I've made that journey from maiden to mother. So we have an epidemic of mothers trying to be maidens. It is unnatural and it is a cause of suffering in motherhood. And I feel that because I was constantly in that maiden mindset where this actually says the maiden thinks of, she wants to be saved or rescued. She wants to get away from her kids a moment and be by herself. She needs validation of others to feel secure. Priority is being young and youthful, influenced by culture, insecure, self-centered. And I found myself that I, I was still in that self-centered mindset. I needed my own time. I needed my time away from my kids. And I was completely there with my first two kids. And when I saw this post, I was like, wow, I feel like I finally made the bridge because then in the healed mother into finally journeying into motherhood, she takes responsibility. She saves herself. She trusts her body, intuition, and wisdom. She's very present in her life and with her kids. And I've really felt like I've become so much more present with God's help. Of course, this is, this is all not been possible without God and his, his strength and strengthening my motherhood journey in this last season with my third child. She's confident in herself and her ability and doesn't always need validation from others. So I found that true. I used to always be on Instagram and social media finding validation on how to put my kids to sleep, what to feed my kids, how to nurse my baby. I like, I needed validation for all those things. Social media is great for that. Y'all are on a social media platform watching me talk about going from maiden to mother now. And I think there's so many great aspects of finding information and influence on these platforms, but at some point you have to trust your gut and if something that someone else does does not work, you don't have to do it and follow. Do what your own intuition is telling you and I, I find this happened in so many ways from how we fed our child, our first child, and when we started feeding a homemade, him a homemade formula, when I, when I finally decided that co-sleeping was right for us and I didn't have to have validation from others telling me that co-sleeping was safe. If I was comfortable with it, it was safe and we, we did it with our family. Um, sleep, I found I used to need validation on putting my child to sleep and letting them cry it out. And that is just when it's not natural for us. And finally just learning to trust my own intuition, leaning into this mothering, finally bridging into the mother. And I feel like I've kind of teetered between the two for quite a while and many of you may feel the same. But when you finally, I feel like I finally made the bridge. I keep saying the bridge from maiden to mother when I've just, 
I've not had that overwhelm all day long of needing to get away from my kids, needing them to leave, needing them to get out of my hair and have some time to like breathe. This also comes from properly fueling your body with the proper nutrition. That's helped a lot as well, but I feel like you finally made that bridge when you, when you're not needing that constant selfish time I mean, I don't really want to call it selfish time because I don't think any of us moms are truly selfish when we want time to ourselves because I, I still do want that but I feel like I don't need it every day now I can kind of like recalibrate just like right now I'm, I'm alone in a quiet space kind of getting my thoughts out talking to you guys and this kind of just refuels me recalibrates me and I'll be ready to go hang out with my kids just after this and enjoy the rest of our day so that post really put it into perspective she also mentions that you don't have to mother children to go from this maiden to mothering phase. There's the immature femininity and the mature femininity. So the immature femininity is the maiden. She's still learning life. She's still maturing. She's still that selfish in that selfish mindset, wanting to be free and youthful. And then when you cross that bridge into the fully wise, mature woman, a lot of times that's in motherhood. A lot of times motherhood bridges us there, but you don't have to mother children to to make this bridge. You could actually even do this before you had kids. I mean, that would have been great if I already had done that before kids. But I think many of us, our kids sort of trigger this transition, which is, I think, how God meant it for it to be. Because there is a verse in the Bible I wanted to talk about for just a second. I think I actually talked about this in a past video. It's in Titus 2, where it talks about older, wiser women and how we we need those in our in our culture. And I don't think that it's respected anymore getting old is not honored people are always wanting to color their hair hide their wrinkles change how their appearance dress differently and i don't think getting old and aging is looked at as beautiful anymore and it truly is titus 2 talks about older men and what they are supposed to do in society and then older women are to be reverent in behavior not slanders or slaves to much wine they are to teach what is good and so to train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands in the way that God may be revealed. It's basically just saying that the wiser older women are to teach the young women and that they are to be cherished and honored. And I just don't think that our culture does that anymore. We're always trying to change our appearance and look more youthful and young. And I think that's why many women, they start to make that bridge into motherhood and they're like, whoa, I don't like this. And they don't have any help to get there. They don't have help from older older women in, in the church and their families. And they just slink back into maiden and they're just stuck. And it's just not the way society is meant to be we start looking at our own needs over our baby so this could look like sleeping this is a big one um whenever we were looking into our own needs before baby we were worried about our own sleep and yes we should be sleeping but our baby should come first and you just have to figure out the the sleep and how it works best for everybody and just when you lose that mindset of selfishness and i keep saying selfishness but selfishness is such has such a bad connotation but I think hopefully you all get what I mean that only like looking out for yourself first and not your your children or your family and I think when you finally make it to motherhood you will so to go back and answer my sweet friend's question I went all around the world about this but I wanted to kind of talk about the bridge that I have made from maiden to mother and how I finally just in her asking this question have realized that I've finally made that bridge in this post I saw just really put the shed some so much light into this topic and I've always loved that verse in Titus and just makes me so happy that I'm here to teach some of you who may be younger than me and just talk about motherhood and teach things about motherhood from God's word and be excited to age and grow old and watch my children grow and teach them all the things that I want them to know and about God and motherhood and of course my husband teach my son about fatherhood and it's just the way God meant it to be is beautiful. And I think we are so caught up in going back, looking younger, feeling ourselves, feeling youthful, needing time alone, that we are just stuck. But when you finally let that go and make that voyage from maiden to mother, you're going to truly, you're going to be so much less overwhelmed throughout your day and needing time alone and needing to get away from your kids and needing time to yourself. So with all that to be said, I still do need time for myself at times at night in the evenings my husband is very helpful with the kids many times he will 
take them on up to get baths while I quietly clean up the kitchen or clean up the living room or tidy things up. Also, like right now, he took the baby outside so I could chat with y'all for a minute. I have taught my kids how to play independently, which I talked all about in a previous video. So a lot of times my kids just naturally go play independently and that gives me just a short pause in my day to kind of just sit down relax, gather my thoughts, and pull away from a little bit of the chaos for a minute. So if your children are still very young, like my pre toddlers were previously when I was in that overwhelmed state, and they're not quite ready to play by themselves, and you just constantly need to take care of them, give them attention, and they're not able to play independently, I just want to offer you some encouragement that the time will come when those kids will play together and you will be able to pull back and just recalibrate and get your, your thoughts together. I always say that it Going from one kids to two was the absolute hardest for me because going just one kid was, was a big wake up call into motherhood, but I still had those selfish tendencies where I could easily put my baby down and slip away and have a long time. With two kids, that got a lot harder because many times their naps didn't align, but now with three kids, the older two play so well together and I just have the baby at times, like it just, it's been so much easier going from two to three than one to two. So. I hope that answered your question on how I get some time alone. Really, I don't. If, if I get some time to myself here and there, it's beautiful and it's welcomed, but I don't stress out and like long for that throughout my day because when I did long for that, it just made me so much more anxious and overwhelmed when I didn't get that alone time and I felt so touched out. Now I just live in the beauty of it. I know that this is a season that I will miss and I know that you know all I know your children are such a blessing they grow up so fast. But that doesn't make it any easier in the moment when you are craving that time just to think and breathe. But when you when you start to look into this made into mother voyage and I'll link some things down below if you want to read it. There is an actual whole book. I, I don't know if it's from a Christian perspective so I haven't actually read it yet. So I'm not gonna recommend the book but I'll link it below if you're interested in reading it. I haven't actually read it yet. So anyway, it's called Made Into Mother and I feel like it's gonna, it gives a lot of insight into this. But as always, we wanna trust the Bible and that verse in Titus says it plain as day. Um, anyways, thank y'all for being here. I'm wishing you a beautiful journey in motherhood. I know it can be overwhelming. I know it can be tough at times, but I know it gets easier. And I just wanna offer you that encouragement if you are in that state and just haven't quite made that full bridge. And like I said, I didn't even realize I made this bridge until just here in the last month. I feel like this transition has been over the last year, um, going from two kids to three. So you will come, you will get there. Take joy in knowing that this is how your journey is supposed to be. And I will see you in a future video.